what's up everyone welcome back to another amazing video so many of you have been requesting me in my previous videos that lawrence please make for us a culture shop video about your experience about your stay in kenya things you find different and guys they are plenty very very plenty and this video is going to be so entertaining and exciting uh, to all of you who are going to watch it guys so if you're new to this channel and you've not yet subscribed kindly subscribe enable the bell button so you'll never miss a video from me okay before we go any further i want to tell my fellow ugandans watching right now that if you want to go to kenya kenya is one of the visa free countries you can go to without a visa you just need a national id a passport and fly to kenya or jump on a bus and go to kenya so never stress yourself kenya is visa free actually most east african countries we are visa free you can easily move across borders so without any further ado let's go into the video let me start with the crazy crazy matatu culture you guys are always <laughs> are always in a disco even on the road while traveling the buses the matatus are full of music and super loud music they have installed mega speakers subwoofers in the whole bus guys who came up with that idea by the way people in nairobi when did this culture start because it was it was kind of crazy for me every time i jumped into a matato the music was too loud actually that is the reason why i never made a vlog about the matatu culture because of the copyright but hey and people are enjoying it i got so surprised there is someone a nigerian who commented in my videos and he was like i also find it weird like music loud music everywhere ever every time and then there are many screens installed you will find some matatos where there are many screens installed all over the matato the bus you find like six or eight big big screens installed around the matato a lot of led lights and then the crazy graffiti is my god my god that is such i think that is something unique to only kenya to only kenya and this most most of these matatos come with free wi-fi's man <laughs> you guys i really enjoyed it i found it weird but at the same time i enjoyed it i remember there is a time i was on a matato and I was dancing to the music and some people saw me and laughed. If you watched my trip from Mombasa, when I was traveling back from Mombasa, I jumped on a super metro and I was vibing to the music seriously while vlogging and some lady was laughing at me in the video. You'll go and spot that. But there are some matatus which don't have loud music like the super metro. And by the way, in the super metro, when you're even receiving a call, when they get to hear that you're on a call or you've received a call, they will lower down the music. But other matatus, they don't lower down the music. And I observed that mostly it's the youths which take these matatus, guys so this is something crazy i saw in kenya and guys tell me as i mentioned earlier how did you come up with this idea who started it all in which year it is something interesting and i don't think we can find it anywhere around the world all right the next one is about your security okay in my country where i come from we have security guards on every building mostly banks government institutions but most of these security guards have guns bondukis <laughs> i didn't know the word bonduki that it means a gun it's dolphin who told me that it's called a bonduki in swahili boom 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 so as i was moving around kenya the whole country i never and never saw a security guard especially these who belong to security companies not government not police not the army those guys don't have bondukis but in my country they all have most of them have bondukis every time they are on alert with a bonduki but hey we don't have crazy shootings like that much as they have bondukis but it is something weird i saw in kenya it was different i remember even dolphin when she was in uganda she was like hey lawrence why why is it that every security guard i'm seeing has a bonduki has a gun and I was like, yeah, that's a culture here because they are guarding, especially those who are guarding banks, those who are guarding businesses, you know. So they have to be with a weapon just in case of any attack they can, you understand. Then one other thing I realized, Kenyans are so 
patriotic. You guys love your country. I think 70% of people I met in Kenya, all over, everywhere I traveled, I saw that you guys have a Kenyan bracelet. Yes, a flag, like this bracelet I'm wearing, but as a flag of your country. I saw that everywhere, even in the deepest parts of Kenya. I went to, for instance, I went to Marafa, deep inside in Malindi. Marafa is like two, two hours away from Malindi. We went inside there to Hell's Kitchen and I found some people there with these bracelets in the flag of, with the, with the flag of Kenya. Now me, I have uh, this one. I bought it at the Maasai market. It has the flags of East African countries. We have Uganda. We have Tanzania, we have Kenya. Yeah, I think next time I will buy one, including all the other new member states of the East African community. But I really admired this culture. You guys are so patriotic. You love your country and the spirit is so, so high. Okay, another thing I noticed is you guys are really so much into environment conservation. There is a lot of green around the city and even outside the city. So much green and also the green parks super well organized green spaces guys much okay I, I never got a chance of visiting these parks especially the uhuru park because it was under renovation your parks are really so much organized and they have free wi-fi they, there is free internet guys you have a lot of green spaces and also i came to learn that uh, cutting a tree in kenya you need a permit to cut a tree in case i want to cut this jackfruit tree behind me here in my home i'll have to go and get a permit from the government if i cut it without a permit i can be arrested <laughs> i thought those things work only in europe but i'm happy to see it just close by just next door our neighbors are practicing this and it has i think that is one of the things contributing to the greenery around nairobi and in kenya at large also about trees i realized that you guys don't use charcoal so much okay some people who use it they use it illegally and if they are caught by authorities they fail some years in prison and many families can afford to buy gas i think your government made it affordable so that people don't cut down trees because every family i went to they have a gas cylinder a small one big one everyone can afford it even the poorest people i visited even the poorest homes i visited at least i found there a gas cylinder so i think this is something uh, kenya is really doing well and many countries here in the region i think are going to learn from you and still on the side of environment conservation i realize that you guys no longer use plastic bags polythene bags in many places i went to i was never served in a polythene bag apart from when i went to jukomba market uh, i remember we bought sugar cane and we were served in a polythene bag and i asked my friend who was taking me around uh, traveling miss by the way thank you so much she and i asked her why i thought uh, polythene paper polythene bags are banned here why is he still using them he said he's using it illegally and if he gets caught he will be arrested i found it quite interesting that many places i went to were using uh, paper bags you get plastic bags to serve snacks everything apart from that one time we were in jikomba market okay i didn't know that our ladies are a big deal in kenya <laughs> that ugandan women are so much loved by kenyan men guys what is it with our women because 90 percent of the men i met in kenya regardless of the location of the region the first thing when they realize when they realized i'm ugandan the first thing they would ask me is hey bro get me a ugandan lady get me a ugandan woman guys what is it with our women you want to take away all our women now what shall we have we as ugandan <laughs> <laughs> and why why not kenyan women what's wrong with kenyan women my brothers now at least okay let's interact and please guys don't feel bad the women in kenya and also uh, other people might get offended but please don't feel bad i want to understand this issue very well i think i'm going to make a whole episode about it i'm going to look for kenyans in uganda and we have a whole episode about it guys what do you think about that okay so tell me why why Hmm? 
Ugandan women are a big deal there, guys. One guy told me that he has made several trips to Uganda, but one of the things that makes him to want to come back to Uganda is because of our women. <laughs> Okay, putting that aside, I later also realized that we are almost the same people, guys. Yes, because I've, I would be walking on the streets of Nairobi and I hear people speaking a language I'm familiar with, one of the languages in Uganda. For instance, some languages in the eastern part of Uganda and I think the northern part of Uganda. Most of, actually, you also have the same names. I would hear people on the streets called a uh, Cheng, what, and we have the same names back here in Uganda, guys. So we are one people. We are one people. And surprisingly, some Kenyans speak Luganda very, very well. We got surprised that uh, one of the security officers, you know, as we were moving around, uh, I was making vlogs with uh, Nabs Ara and Rina TL of Africa is Not a Jungle. By the way, they are also YouTubers. Uh, go and show them some love. I'm going to link their channels in the description down below. They are also Ugandan ladies. Very, very beautiful. For those Kenyan men who love Ugandan ladies, you will really enjoy their content. Yeah, so a police guy, I don't know if he was an army officer or a police uh, officer, he came to us and he was asking why we are recording and we were talking to ourselves in Luganda and the guy switched to Luganda, we were like, what? I was like, hey, Mulo, Luganda, Srumanyi, you think I don't understand Luganda? <laughs> we were all blown away guys and also guys there is a lot of police are disguised in plain clothes on the streets of nairobi i think this is the reason as to why there is not so much crime rates in nairobi because people are th people are scaring me about safety 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 your phone your camera what but i never had any bad experience i think it's because of that reason because there is a lot of security in plain clothes on the streets of Nairobi, I realized that like, like three times, cause people were coming to me and asking me why I'm recording. Then they introduce themselves as police. They show their badge. Yeah, and I really want to commend the Kenyan security. Kenyan police is not in a panic. When they see that you're doing something on the streets, which is a bit unusual, they approach you and introduce themselves. They are more professional. They are professional. And I found them friendly because sometimes I would be walking around recording and then police comes, hey, YouTube, what's the name of your YouTube channel? What, what, what? You get, but some of them never wanted to be in the camera. So you guys, I really commend you for that. But I, I also realized that Kenyans don't like their security. <laughs> I, I really don't know why that you don't like the police officer, especially the police. I don't know why, but me, I found them a bit more professional. Yeah, someone who approaches you, introduces themselves as, as police. Man, that is something so interesting and they handle you well without harassing you. Guys, it was really, really incredible for me. Okay, let's talk about Ugali. I think you guys are just hyping Ugali. What is so special with Ugali? Because and there are some people who used to say that Kenyan Wugali is different from Ugandan Wugali. In Uganda, we call it Posho or Kawunga. In Kenya, they call it Wugali. There is not so much of a significant difference between our Wugali and your Wugali. It's only that in Uganda, people mostly eat the super white Wugali, but that one doesn't have a lot of nutrients, and that one happens to be more expensive. But the one in Kenya was a bit... Uh, darker than the one in Uganda but it was all the same because we also eat it but I think in in Kenya it is so much of a delicacy mostly with skuma wiki for us the matoke we enjoy it mostly with uh, with guinnard sauce and also smoked beef stew so the Ugali thing I thought it would be so different from ours but it was all the same. For me, that's what I feel. Ugali was almost the same. Though, one thing I realized, guys, your food doesn't have so much sauce. Yes, that your food is mostly dry. At least, according to my experience, I'm giving my honest opinion, guys. Yeah. Now, let me talk about the internet. I think one thing that has facilitated the rapid growth of the rapid development in Kenya is the internet. Guys, I realize that internet in Kenya is cheap, okay, affordable. Everyone can afford to buy internet, you get? And everyone almost has a smartphone. 
everyone speaks English. Almost everyone on the street speaks English. And th there is a lot of Wi-Fi everywhere, everywhere. Even in people's homes, people have Wi-Fi's. And I asked uh, Mr. Mwakazi how much he pays for his Wi-Fi on a monthly basis, unlimited, and the speeds were crazy. It was very fast. That's what I used to upload most of my videos. And Mr. Makas told me how much he pays, and it was very little money compared to where I come from. It was like four times cheaper than how, how much I buy internet back home in Uganda here. So your internet is very, very affordable. There is a lot of Wi-Fi everywhere, many restaurants. Okay, in Uganda, we also have restaurants which offer Wi-Fi, but in Kenya, almost every restaurant has Wi-Fi. And also, I'm happy about the initiative of uh, President Ruto, your president, of uh, installing Wi-Fi all over the city. So you can't get stranded. Uh, when on the streets, you just get on the internet and text people on WhatsApp. And also, I think this is going to really help content creators up their game. Those who cannot afford to buy internet, they, are, they will be able to upload their content on the internet using the free Wi-Fi's, which will be provided by the government. So Kenyans were really doing well on the side of internet. That's why I think many big companies are coming to the country. I saw Microsoft offices and very, very many big international companies and organizations have offices there in Kenya. Okay, this is one thing I found weird. Kenya is really developing very, very fast. You have a lot of high-rise apartments. But why are all these buildings? The finishing. Okay, inside the finishing is nice. But outside, why is it that the finishing outside is not that beautiful? It's like uh, having these concrete bricks aligned together, the, the kind of finishing or is. And also in the rich neighborhoods, because we walked around, sorry, we had a drive through the rich neighborhoods. And I saw that the finishing on houses is always like that, guys. Why? 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 I ask myself why. Everywhere, even in Malindi, even it's a culture in Kenya. The finishing of houses is always like that. Like uh, those con concrete bricks put together. I really found it uh, strange. Maybe you guys tell me why you do things like that especially when it comes to housing but uh, in general kenya is so much developing i saw many big 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 projects there uh, the road projects the super thicker highway in my life i've I'd never seen such a road uh, as big as that one yes i'm being honest some people might find it funny might laugh about it but i'm being honest it was indeed an engineering marvel before my eyes i couldn't believe it yeah let's talk about the economy of kenya i was super super overwhelmed by how you guys are going cashless and the mpesa thingy which also impressed europe i saw some countries in europe i think in eastern europe are paying interest they want to adopt this in their countries, M-Pesa. Even people in villages accept M-Pesa. Most transactions, most payments are done on M-Pesa. I really loved it that even the Kibandaski ladies, people doing simple, simple jobs also accept M-Pesa payments. Uh, well, in Uganda, we have uh, mobile money, but it doesn't work to the level of of M-Pesa in Kenya that it is accepted anyway. You can spend a whole month without having cash in your hands by just doing transactions on your mobile phone. And I think it helps on the part of uh, fighting counterfeit money in the economy and also pickpocketing because you know pickpocketers always target people when they see that you have money. But nowadays I think it's not like that because people don't move with money. This could be one of the things contributing to the reducing crime rate in Nairobi. Yeah, because uh, as someone commented in my previous video about Nairobi being called uh, Nairobi, how it came to be called Nairobi, that it started some years back, like 10, 15 or 20 years back. And it was the issue because the economy was not doing well. So many people resorted to pickpocketing. What? But right now, because things are changing, the economy is going cashless. The pickpocketers are 
seeing that there are less opportunities for them so that's why people are now resorting to other ways of other modern ways uh, you'd get of taking advantage of people but in general i really loved kenyans kenyans you guys were very very nice you really showed me love when i was in your country and i really loved my stay and i'm sure coming back very very soon i see many of you welcomed me to kisumu many of you want me to come to kisumu and uh, i'm going to make it a point to come back and visit almost all counties in uh, in kenya though according to the according to the internet i saw that some counties are not safe yeah maybe guys you should tell me in the comment section when i come back which parts should i visit and uh, other parts i should not visit please let me know and also guys i want to thank everyone who has contributed to my dream of buying a drone i remember uh, sometime back i put up a post on the community and also in my previous video i talked about it and i saw some of you sent some transactions to my mpesa and also my ugandan number thank you so much and please we really still need money uh, for me to acquire this drone if you can if you're willing to help me i'm leaving my phone numbers on the screen there kindly send anything you can every amount of money matters regardless however small it is thank you thank you so much may god bless you in advance and tell me what you think about my experience in kenya leave your thoughts in the comment section and if you've not yet subscribed kindly subscribe enable the bell button so you'll never miss amazing videos from me and let's meet in this video here yes click 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 all right, let's meet here.